Hello and welcome back. So far we have learned how to create a project, how to run the server, how to create a basic application, which didn't really do much. It has just rendered text to the web browser. But don't worry, we are going to get to the exciting parts soon enough. But the basics are very important to have a solid foundation. Today we are going to expand a little bit and we will set up the database for our Django application and we're going to focus on using models to represent the data we want to store within our agent tours agency application. So if you have noticed, I have a new folder here, lesson three, migrate SQLite three. I'm going to repeat the exact same steps I took the last lesson. Actually, it's going to be the same structure as world tour. We're going to repeat the same exact steps, but first I want to change the directory to lesson three, migrate SQLite three, then I will do pipnv shell to activate the virtual environment. All right, perfect. Now I want to again install Django. Very good. Now I want to create the world tour project. So I will say Django admin start project world tour. Then I will cd to world tour. Oops, world tour. Inside world tour, I want to create the application. So take a look down here below in lesson three, migrate SQLite three. If I will click on that, we have world tour. Again, we have the, the, the project, which is world tour, right? And we have the manage.py. So we'll create our application, Python manage.py start app Asia tours agency. Great. So we have again our project and our application. All right, so we have the exact same structure as lesson two and the files are exactly the same. I've copied everything, so don't worry about any changes. But let's go to the important part. Initially, in Asia Tours Agency application, the models.py is empty. And you can see that Django tells you here to create your models here. So Django encourages us to create our models there. Let's say we want to model a tour that includes various destinations across Asia. So what we can do is we can define a class called tour. Um, let's do a class tour that's going to inherit models.model. And models.model basically is providing a structured way to define the fields and behaviors of our database objects. So that's the reason why we need to enter models.model as a parameter in the tour class. All right, so next we need an origin country, we need a destination. So we need, we need a origin country. We need the destination. Um, we need the number of nights, right? And we need the price for that tour. Okay, so these are the fields that we need to create. And Django makes it so easy. So what I will do is I will declare a variable, I'm going to call it origin country. And that's going to be the origin country field, right? So I will need the models. And I will want to access car field. And the character field here has a maximum length. So the maximum length for the origin country, I'm going to make it 64, right? So maximum length is 64. And that means simply that the maximum length of the origin country that's going to be entered is 64 characters, not more. So that's an SQL constraint. Also, I want the destination country. So I'm going just to change that destination country. And it also is going to be models.character field. And again, I'm going to leave it to uh, the maximum 64. Similarly, I need number of nights and price. So I'm going to change that to number of nights. So number of nights here is an integer field. So an integer field here is used to store the number of nights for the tour. We don't need any characters, we need an integer. So that's going to be integer field, and I'm going to leave it empty. And finally, I need the price. So that's going to be the price models dot again, integer field. And again, I'm going to 
leave it empty. All right, so this is our tour class, and it's actually going to act as a blueprint for our database table. It's going to enable you to manage the tour records without manually handling the database operations. So that's a little bit of uh, object-oriented programming here. We can instantiate the class by creating any object. So we can create tour one. The tour one can have an origin country, let's say Japan, destination country, China, number of nights, let's say um, seven nights, and the price, let's say arbitrarily uh, $1,500, for example. So that's going to be tour one. This is the object. And the Django's object relational mapping or ORM takes care of all of the CRUD operations like create, read, update, and delete on this table. So you can create a record, you can read a record, you can update it, and you can delete it. And it's very possible that your application gets bigger in size due to increasing number of tours, for example. You probably would want to change in your code. And as a result, your database also should be modified. Quite frankly, it's going to be a big headache to manage those changes manually. And here comes migrations to the rescue, which has one empty file called init.py. So migrations are Django's way of propagating changes we make to our models, like adding a new field or changing a field type into the database schema. You don't have to do this manually. Django is going to take care of that for you. How to make migrations? Well, before I show you that, we need to make sure that in our world tour project in settings.py, we have in our installed apps, we have our application. And indeed we have Asia tours agency apps dot Asia tours agency config. In the future, when you're going to create your Django projects, the first thing you need to do is to add your application to installed apps list. So I want to create and apply migrations. Now you will need to type the following command. And again, make sure you are in the proper folder. And maybe I will open the Explorer just to show you that there's going to be a file that's going to be generated when we apply migrations. So maybe I can make this a little bit smaller. All right. Okay, so to apply migrations, we'll do Python manage.py make migrations. Perfect. Migrations for Asia Tours Agency is complete. We have created a model tour. If you'll we'll see here in migrations, we'll have the triple zero one underscore initial dot pi created for us. Let's click on that and let's see what we have. So first of all, you have the migrations and models imported from django.db. We have a migration class that takes migrations dot migration. The initial state of the migration has a Boolean value, which is true. Dependencies is an empty list and we have the operations. So the operations is a list and inside operations, we have migrations dot create model function and it has actually created a tour. Why tour? Simply because in the models.py, we have our class, which is tour. This is the name of the class and the name of the table. And inside that class or that table, we will have different fields. So let's get back to triple zero one initial. We have ID. And notice that we haven't added the ID when we created our models. This is auto generated and auto incremented. So every time you're going to add a record to your table, Django is going to add automatically an ID. So the first record will have an ID of one, for example, the second record will have an ID of two and so on. Next, we have origin country, destination country, number of nights and price. This is actually the database schema. We haven't created anything in that migration. It was auto generated when we did make migrations command. So as we're happy with our table and fields, now we can go ahead and apply the migrations to the database. And for that, we'll have a different command. The command is going to be Python manage.py migrate. So the first command was make migrations. The second command to apply these migrations is migrate. Hit enter. Perfect. Migrations were all applied successfully. The admin, the Asia Tours agency, which is our application, auth, content types, and sessions. So what actually Django did here is that it applied all of the pending migrations to the database. And we have established a new table called tour which is essentially the class, right? So that's the class or the table with the different fields. And this setup means that each tool record will have a unique ID, as we said, and the fields will adhere to the constraints defined in our model, like the max length, for example. 
All right, in the next part, we're going to explore how to interact with this database directly through Django's shell, and also how to add tours in our tour records. Also, one very important thing you need to be aware of is the database inside your settings.py. So the default engine for your databases here is SQLite 3 database management system. This is the default DBMS. And when we have applied migrations via the migrate command, we have actually created a table via SQLite 3. Now, as I mentioned in the first lesson, Django is very flexible. You can change that to PostgreSQL or SQL Alchemy, or even MongoDB if you prefer NoSQL database management systems. All right, so in the next part, we're going to explore how to interact with this database directly through Django's shell and how to add tours to our tour records. Thanks for following along and I will see you in the next video.